We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. Now it's time to take a sports break, a look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends in sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch. Welcome once again to another edition of the Daily Digits, this time for the June 19th in the history of team sports. Uh, now, sports history is made every day of the year, and we'll preserve it at least a little sampling from some of the great athletes every day based on the uniform numbers that they wore. And today, a couple of the uniforms we're going to be talking about are number 11 and number 17. Let's start off June 19th. 1846, the first officially recognized baseball game was played in Hoboken, New Jersey. While the contest was played under the Knickerbocker rules, which are also sometimes known as the Cartwright rules, after the then seated president of the Knickerbocker Club, Alexander J. Cartwright, who wrote them on September of 1845. Now, there's not much clarity on the contest, but it appears that the Knicks played and lost the game to a team by the name of the New York Nines, or also known as the New York Gothams, by the score of 23 to 1. So even though they used the rules that they created, uh, didn't really help out the old Knickerbockers on that uh, first baseball game, 1846. On June 19, 1938, the Pittsburgh Pirates legend, Paul Wehner, wearing number 11, crushed a home run off a Philadelphia Phillies pitcher, Pete Sivas, to carry the Pirates to an 8 to nothing victory over their cross-state rivals of Phillies. We move now to June 19, 1942. Four years later, that same Paul Wehner earned his 3,000th hit, becoming only the seventh player in Major League Baseball history at the time to reach such a lofty baseball milestone. 3,000 hits by Paul Wehner. A year later, June 19th, 1943, the Steelers and the Eagles, their merger agreement had officially ended on this day. Now, I guess you could say that the Steagle had landed. Okay, that was bad. That was real bad. But you remember that Steagle's team, uh, during World War II there, they had to merge their teams, uh, the Steelers and the Eagles, and became the Steagles squad. And uh, the coaches uh, didn't get along very well because they sort of had a co-coaching situation going on there in uh, that, those Pennsylvania teams as Walt Keesling of the Steelers co-coached with Greasy Neal. And apparently these two gentlemen really didn't get along very well, had a little bit different philosophy on how to run a football team and call plays and, and such. And, and thus the Steagles were not a very good team either. Uh, you know, missing a lot of their good players from both squads uh, that were serving in World War II. And uh, the whole coaching situation wasn't uh, making anything any more healthier, let's just say that. Now, June 19, 1952, the Brooklyn Dodgers baseball team had a player named by the name of Carl Erksine, number 17 he wore in the program on that day, and he tossed a no-no hitter against the Chicago Cubs in a 5-0 victory for the Dodger Blue, all the way back there when they played in Brooklyn in the uh, early 50s. But what a, a tremendous little bit of history here, and we're glad that you could share it with us once again. We take this sports break every single day, so make sure you join back for more and more, and uh, we also try to give you a little bit of facts and figures what are going on or a little backstory when we can so you can catch even more items on sports history on the sports history network very aptly named and on the jerseydispatch.com uh, website which is the home website for this very podcast sportsjerseydispatch.com till tomorrow everybody have a great sports history day we're dribbling around and see the shot clock's almost out so we got to put up our shot and come back tomorrow for some more great sports history 
We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. offices of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. Isn't it just? A poster-sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website, where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction, in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. (laughs) <laughs> Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so Retro it was that Marla Delft discovered Clifford? the spondiferous magic of row one sports memorabilia arts and prints. You can, too, by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. That's R-O-W number one today for access to the full row one catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act A for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at Check out and keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer, coming soon.